Hello all, Gavin here, and you're listening to Little Boys Night episode number 8. Welcome, welcome. If this is your first time listening, thanks for coming. If this is your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh, or eighth time listening, then thanks for sticking around. We appreciate it. Little Boys Night uh, is produced every Friday. They come out on Friday for your enjoyment, and they can be listened to on iTunes. You can subscribe there. You could also find us on SoundCloud under the name Little Boys Night. Um, those links, as well as show notes that walk you through the show and tell you what time we do what things, can be found at our website, which is littleboysnight.wordpress.com. You can also find all of our social media links there. We got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got Instagram, and we even have Snapchat for some reason. So uh, that's about all I have to tell you. Thanks for listening again. Um, please share us with your friends if you like it, because we would just be, we'd be really thankful for that. All right, enough of me talking. Let's get into the show. It's Gavin. Are we starting? Oh. It's, uh, I'm, it's Yo-Yo. It's Jared. It's John. Hey. I'm um, Riley. Let's just... I'm Adam. Yeah. Everybody's here. All and six. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's back, too. Horrible. Um, all right. Let's just get right into the first segment. Okay. All right. So, just a little, what do you think of yourself kind of thing. Um, name a theme song. Nothing. Okay, then. Uh, I'm worthless. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. You probably like Twenty One yeah, Pilots. Huh? Worthless. You probably like Twenty One Pilots then. Uh, but name a theme song for yourself. Uh, mm. Any current song. Uh, it has to be current. Sure. No, it doesn't have to. No. Any existing song. I guess I should mm. say. So no future songs. No songs <laughs> that I will one day write. Or that will one day be published. Adam Braxdale. So yeah. Yes, sir. Go buy. Uh, what is it called? Please Leaves on out. Halloween. Little we'll plug. To our little boy. Yeah. <laughs> Former little boy. Send us our chat. Pay us, Adam. <laughs> so theme song, right? Yeah, theme song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, for the longest time, um, I love this song. It's like a big band song called Sing, Sing, Sing by mm. Benny Goodman. That's a good song. And I discovered it because I was in a play my freshman year, and it was one of the songs that it was like the, it was said in the 1930s, and that was one of the songs. I'll, I'll just play a little snippet. Uh, you're going to get the Gavin Poe uh, remix to avoid copyright issues, and hopefully you'll still all recognize it. Anybody's, I know John's heard it because we were dancing to it the other week. Uh, You're a Strange Animal by Gowan. It's this It's this little... I'm sure it's a one-hit wonder because I've never heard of this band or a person before. I'm not even sure. Um, but it's a great song about being a strange animal, which I kind of see myself as. The lyrics go, You're a strange animal. That's what I know. You're a strange animal. I've got to follow. So it's like the singer's talking to me, like I'm a strange animal, but worth following. That's freaking weird, dude. It's a weird song, I'm a weird guy. <laughs> but it's a really good song, you should listen to it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, I have like two songs I would consider my theme song, but lyrically, I wouldn't agree with them as my theme song, because like, 
They're just I just like the sound of them like ACDC Thunderstruck. I love that song. There's a lot of energy and I feel like I have a lot of energy. Or I want to dance with somebody by Whitney Houston. As of recently, I don't know why. Mm. It's because like, you want to dance with somebody. No, nah, dude. It's just that's what I'm saying. Lyr- lyrically, these songs don't pertain to me, but like instrumentally. Have you like turned on the radio in the last thirty years? I just noticed <laughs> that your songs are from a particular era and time. I have, yeah. Sorry, what are you Nothing. getting at? Yeah, what? Yeah. I'm just Don't saying, you not like, have songs from a specific no, era. No, his are from the yours 1930s. Yours are from the 30s, but yours is like one. You're like, I could go two of them. Both of them just happen to be from around the same point in time. I'm just asking a question. Which is? Which is a, yeah. an entire, like, what, decade? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking a question. Would you rather me like just the say, clarifying like, questions? Just a Katy do a Perry song investigative or reporting? a J Biebs? Is yeah, that so what you I'd want? I'd rather you do "Firework" by Katy Perry. Yo, yo. That's, That's a good what song. <laughs> Dave Skylar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, incidentally, my song is "Firework." No. <laughs> uh, my song would probably be "Goofy Goober Rock" edition from nice. SpongeBob. Because I'm a goofy goober, and sometimes yeah. I rock. I'm a goofy goober, yeah. yeah. You're a goofy goober, yeah. yeah. We're all goofy goobers, yeah. Goofy, 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 goofy goober! Yeah. Yeah. This is quality radio. Thanks. Woo! Yeah, that'd be my song. I think it's fitting, well, lyrically and be. musically. I'm a goofy goober! Rah! Bum, 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 bum. We're all goofy goobers! Rah! Yeah. Look, uh, keep out... Keep a look out for our album coming out soon. There'll be an album of covers of <laughs> songs from, from cartoons. Spongebob. Yeah. <laughs> You're a strange animal. No. <laughs> yeah, all the theme songs we'll sing ourselves. Sing, sing, sing will be just <laughs> me scatting. Give it up, All right. That was me. Got, right. got something for us, J-Man? Uh, yeah. I've got um, a few Ooh, headlines. Good. We're just going to... This is a, a classic here. The return of headlines. The return of headlines. Um, for okay. those of you who are just not tuning in, I will read some vague headlines, and uh, we will <clears throat> come up with stories <laughs> based around them. <laughs> this one's really good. So to get started, we have an article called uh, titled... Woman denied $43 million jackpot, offered steak dinner instead. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? That better have been a freaking good steak dinner. Yeah. <laughs> she probably went to Steak and Shake. Oh, what happened was she probably... All right. There you go. So here's what I imagine. Uh, and this might actually be what sort of happened. So if I get it, I think that means I win. But... What I'm sure happened is she went to a casino, started playing the nickel slots or something. She's probably 87 year old. We'll call her Aunt Jemima, <laughs> and uh, she's playing, and she gets the 43 million dollar jackpot. Uh-huh. Really odd jackpot, very specific, but she gets it, and she goes in to cash it in because the nickels didn't spit it all out, and they're like, oh, "We don't have that money here. Could we give you a steak dinner instead?" And she'd say. Yeah, because she's 87, and she'll take what she can get at this point. Yeah, by the time they, like, get their hands on the money and get into her pants, she'll be dead. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you gotta live in the moment. See, that's the beauty of the casino. Like, you just keep setting up red tape until the winners die. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's the secret. Okay. And then they can't will it away, because was it even theirs to begin with? Possession is nine-tenths of the law. I think we should start a casino. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Okay, so I guess my story, um, she's like kind of on the reservation, just this... The Indian reservation, because that's where they have casinos? Yes. <laughs> why, is, <laughs> why is there everybody laughing? <laughs> I don't... Okay, but like, I would go with Jared's, you know, like an old lady, she doesn't care much about life, you know, or like what's going to happen pretty much. What? What? Nothing. <laughs> okay, and so... Existential. She goes to like... Or it could be a careless person. I don't. I don't know. But she goes to this, um, you know, gas station casino, and she gets the forty-three million dollar jack jackpot. But she's really hungry and kind of a little drunk, and she's like really, really hungry, uh-huh. and like, yeah, sorry, we don't have the money today. But would you rather take a steak instead? And she's like, heck yeah, I'm starving. Give it to me. She had the munchies from yep. her glaucoma medicine. Yeah. I didn't say that, but they're <laughs> glaucoma. glaucoma what I what I do hope the steak dinner was. I hope it was some tri-tip steak made by Dr. John Spence, because that's yes. that's the Ooh. only steak dinner. Ooh. True, that is even close to being worth that much Ooh. money. 
high quality. Or give, some, us, give us our check, Dr. John Spence. <laughs> yeah. That's, right. that's my story. You want to know what the real story was? Yeah. <laughs> It was funny that you called her Aunt Jemima because it is an African American lady. Oh no! Um, Boom. But she's a young woman. Like she looks to be in about her thirties, and the and this sounds like the biggest lie by the casino in the books. But they said the the slot machine malfunctioned oh, and know. showed forty three million dollars on the screen, but really she only won two dollars and forty two cents. Whoa. So they felt well, they yeah. felt bad, so they gave her Bologna. a steak dinner instead. Well it's because forty three million and two dollars and forty two cents are so close numerically that all it would take is like one teeny little screen glitch. <laughs> right, and yeah. and just all you gotta do is move <laughs> one decimal one yep. place and you've got forty three million dollars. Casino's so full of crap, no, man. Bologna. That's stupid. I hope she gets a steak dinner and a good lawyer. Uh, <laughs> what's her What's her actual name? Do we know? Uh, I don't. I don't have that. I just screenshot of the Maybe steak dinners for life. Ooh, Depending on how much she goes, she might be able to rack it up to forty three million. <laughs> <laughs> Brings her friends too. How expensive those steak dinners are. If she has a weekly party with like a hundred people in attendance, I'd make it. If I got free steak. I'd be going there a lot. Yeah, like I might relocate my entire life for free steak. Yeah, for yeah. Move the kids. And casinos, they have some solid food. That's how they get you in there, man. Is it not, not the gambling. Is it? It's not the the gambling. The slight chance of winning being nope. a millionaire. It's so all you can eat crab leg buffets. Trust me. All right. <laughs> Glad that I've been to a casino before. Yeah, mom. Liar. I I have. I used to live in Las Vegas. Mm. All right, we ready? Witness. We ready for our next headline? Yeah. All right, this one, this one is a pretty like bland article, but the title can be interpreted about five thousand different ways. Mm. How Let's to stop? It. How to stop sugar from sneaking into your child's diet? Yep. All right, I was thinking. I actually had like, so Sugar Ray Leonard is, <laughs> he's he's been, you know, he's been fighting, and. He's just starving, but his trainer won't let him eat Lunchables or like anything, any like PB and J. Nope, nope, Sugar Ray, you can't have that. So, where like because his favorite food happens to just be like marketed at children, all he's got to do is find you know average child on the street and just follow him home and sneak into his diet. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, th- yeah, I so, felt like that was pretty. Uh, you got to read it out, read the article to find out how to stop him. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, w- I was thinking that like the cat might be named Sugar or something, <laughs> and like Sugar's favorite thing to play with is like uh, the kitchen equipment. So, how to how to stop Sugar from sneaking into your kid's diet? He's already like, blended off one of his paws. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want another accident to happen and accidentally getting the meat sauce. So, uh, you gotta. You got a pretty much childproof. You thought your kids were grown up. They're eight and nine now, so you thought you could get rid of all the childproofing like the gates. The ripe and... old age of eight and nine. <laughs> yeah, they've learned when, when they, they well, when they know not to play with knives and stuff. But uh, yeah, you got learned. a cat named Sugar who likes to. So you gotta you gotta re. Uh, yeah, yeah, childproof. All yeah, that you gotta stuff. move all the knives up to the top pet, drawer. Pet proof, all that stuff. That you talking about? Yeah. Is there a process of pet proofing? Um, Kill the pet. What's the what's the actual article? Is it just super boring? Like it's just it's one of those like, like, vegan, like hey moms trolling I knew it. through the internet like here are more healthy options. Don't yeah. do they? All right, do they talk bad about pop tarts? Uh, not to my knowledge. Once again, I've just taken a screenshot of a lot of these and read the like the who, little do intros. Do we know who the writer? Who who the news source is? Uh, CNN. All right. By Lisa, Lisa Dreyer. All right, Lisa Dreyer. Sounds like a mom. Let me just give you a word of advice. Don't come against my boy, Pop-Tarts. Oh, Otherwise, we're going to have issues, and I will hunt Fight you worse. down. Get him, Jared. I'm you heard it here man. first. I'm, in, I'm his hype man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so our next headline is Bulletproof cows deter thieves in Madagascar. <laughs> yes, sir. What? Bulletproof cows? They call them the Luke Cage cows. <laughs> <laughs> They're just wearing bulletproof vests. <laughs> Standing guard in front of... What was it? What did they protect? Uh, they just... 
they deterred thieves that didn't oh, say what they Yeah, protected. standing in front of like a safe. <laughs> just mooing. <laughs> There's a like, trough there. Where's the safest place of put oh, I've all got my worldly possessions after we're done? Right in the middle of this circle of my bulletproof cows <laughs> that I genetically engineered yeah, so they could those, protect my thing. Are those GMOs? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how are you going to kill those cows? Those cows are never going to be slaughtered. You could hey, you could they're not uh, knife proof, right? They're bulletproof. I feel like if you're bulletproof, you're knife proof. You could drown them. But then or, you'd have to recover them, and then your meat would probably be soggy. Or you could just suffocate them. You could just barbecue them as is. True. Yeah, like boiling, kind of. Like a uh, hard shell. Just you'd have to poison them. Oh. But then you have to eat the poison. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to die. What if you? What if they died of obesity? There you go. Overfeed. You could overfeed them, and then they'd probably have. I mean, there'd be a lot of meat or a lot of fat yeah. in there, but. But you probably get even more money. Hey, after. fat tastes good with with meat, right? And I mean, there's a totally a market for bulletproof beef. Also, oh, bulletproof skin, it, dude. You could just hire them out to people as, like, protection. Yeah. Secret Service would no longer be needed. This is this wasn't an article, actually. It was an advertisement. <laughs> Stop in a raise. Bulletproof bovine creatures. <laughs> For just ten more dollars on your uh, monthly ADP subscription, you can add bulletproof cows. Did you say ADP or NRA? Because I feel like Ooh. the NRA would be burr, 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 the NRA. Burr, burr, no, burr. the NRA would not want that. They don't want anything to be bulletproof. Uh, they have to have something to protect them when Obama comes for their guns, right? Yeah, their when guns. When Clinton comes for their guns. Oh, right. 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 My bad. Or Trump. You never know. Yeah. All right. Gary so, no fly, no buy. So the title is actually super, super misleading. Oh. The cows themselves are not bulletproof. What the heck? It's called a, z- a zebu. A zebu. And they're <gasps> regarded... Zebu. Yeah. From yes. Yeah, you're right. Whoa. Uh, I thought that was like a made-up word. Buffalo, yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of. So, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. All right. So, they're, they're considered sacred. So, to kill these things it is, is like a capital, it's like, like yeah. offense. And so, Hindu. because they are, like, yeah... I think Hindus, that's correct. Um, but they're placed in front of, um, well, here, they're, it says they're renowned warriors and their cattle are traditionally guarded with axes and spears, but they can, they, they don't need to be guarded anymore because they can save us under any circumstance, which is an actual quote from a 16 year old. Nice. Um, a good source of quality news. Um, why, why did the story even get written? I, it's a cultural piece about like, kind of like the sacredness of the cow. It says that the cow, like when the cow poops, the it's an, the cow they handle the feces with their hands because it's not considered to be dirty because it's a sacred animal. Oh. Makes sense. And after drinking the cow's milk, the cup that was used must be washed and the water should be thrown to the east. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a pretty worthless what culture. If, what if you drink milk at night and you get the, throw the water to the east? Where do you... Where do you look, kind of thing? Compass. The North Star. Freak. That too. I'm an idiot. Orion Belt. It's okay. Astronomy thing. Sorry. You I sniff for uh, China and the polluted air. Well, that sounds like some bull crap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <gasps> nope. All right. Boo. <laughs> All right. My final headline. It just <laughs> says Val Kilmer. <laughs> Oh, sorry. You okay? Thank you. I'm good. Do that again and we're kicking you out. <laughs> oh, leave. <laughs> Val Kilmer, colon, not like, not like the body part, right. but like the, <laughs> the punctuation mark. Val Kilmer, I don't have cancer. He doesn't, I guess. I guess it, it's settled. Pretty straightforward. I guess maybe there's a rumor going around? I guess it's it like has those, to be. Like the celebrity, like, Morgan Freeman died, but then two days later he's like, I'm still alive. It's a <laughs> hoax. Or it could be like, um... Just checking in, everybody. <laughs> Just want you to know. Yeah, I don't have cancer. Was this a, yeah, was this a like Twitter, most Twitter like post? most people? I <laughs> I don't. Just to let you know, I'm, I, or maybe this was like a part of his like I'm not a star campaign anymore. He's like I'm just like everyone else. I go out to eat. I do my laundry. I don't have cancer. Yeah. I'm just like you, okay? Yeah. Or maybe the uh, maybe he's bragging. 
Yeah. If he's like, <laughs> I don't have cancer. Yeah, no, I don't, you, the rest of you who do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when was this published? In the middle of October? Jeez, Val Kilmer, you stink. No, like, you're a jerk, recently. Man. Oh, recently. I know, the, I know the story behind it, but do we want to keep coming up with crap, Actually, or is it too, too straightforward? Oh, man. I, I, I just kind of think Val Kilmer's a jerk. Like, what if he was just, like, showing off? Hey, uh, let me tell you guys a thing or two. Yeah. I don't have cancer. My career may be dead, but at least my body isn't. <laughs> it's almost dead. Have you seen pictures of him, though? No. no. He's a I big mean, man now. Yeah, he is. There's this picture of him. I think it's like a meme. And it's like him, and he looks like a whale now. And he's in a chair, and he turned around and looked at the camera. And the meme says, I used to be Batman. Or maybe it's just one of those things wow. where someone was like, Jeez, Savage. Kilmer, you're super fat. And well, he's like, well, I don't have cancer. Yeah. Like, almost, all of the photos, almost all of the photos I mean, that they like show of him movie. these days are like incredibly unflattering paparazzi pictures. But the one for this was like a red carpet picture, and it looked almost exactly like one of the unflattering paparazzi Well, pictures. I'd try and get an unflattering picture of him, too, if I thought he was bragging about not having cancer. Yeah. Like, if anyone deserves that, someone who, like, brags about not having cancer. Okay, the real story is, Michael Douglas came out the other day and said that Val Kilmer was struggling with cancer and really was just, like, at the end of his life, pretty much. Huh. Like, they were like, he's, 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 he's pretty much done. And so Val Kilmer came out and was like, hey, just so you guys know, I don't have cancer. <laughs> why, would, why would Michael Douglas say that? I think yeah, he's Michael like, Douglas, Michael Douglas was... is like, I had, I had, what was it, throat cancer? Or like some sort, it was like his mouth or thyroid or something. Because he said, because he's famous for, we may have to bleep this out, he's famous for saying he got, I think he got cured by taking vitamins. Ooh. Oh, I'll yeah. do it. Yeah, we'll we'll just we'll beep that out yeah, later. Yeah, should. But um, yeah. So I think I think now he's just like, well, now that I've had cancer, I'm an expert on on cancer. So like, Val Kilmer from those paparazzi pictures, yeah. he definitely is. He's got he's got it. Yeah, you can tell just by smelling a guy. Like a couple things on that. First off, I I think we're giving Michael Douglas an unfair rap. Maybe he's he meant like. Uh, Val Kilmer is struggling with the idea of cancer. Oh, like he doesn't believe in it? <laughs> yeah, he's just like, cancer's probably a government thing. <laughs> and second off, Michael Douglas, if you are such an idiot that you think an overweight man has cancer, I'm not sure that you know how things, like, most of the treatment goes for that. No, I'm Silly mad boy. Michael Douglas. Or, yeah. I think it's stupid that he thinks, because he's had cancer, he's now an expert on yeah. cancer. Okay, just so you know, this is all being made up on the spot. It's like speculation. It's just yeah. <laughs> but the the only thing that's true about what we just said was that he came out and said he had cancer. Okay. And then also what Douglas said about curing his cancer. Okay. And so, that he's an expert? He's no, a, I'm oh, that's okay. that was kind of a joke. That oh, was very direct. Douglas, My bad, Michael. But Douglas was just like he's probably struggling with can like he said something along no, those like, lines, right? He he made like a, an like, he, he said, this is, this is a turtle truth principle, Dr. Dale Garrett. He said, this is this is a fact nice. that he has cancer. And he's, like, as if he was his, like, close confidant who told him, Michael Douglas, I've got cancer. You're friggin' dipwad. Get out of here. What have you even, what have you even done lately? Ant-Man. That was kind of cool, but it wasn't that cool. <laughs> it was good. It doesn't give you, too. It doesn't give you the right to go and around and be like, he's putting the wasp in there. Oh, it, that's what I meant. Oh, it doesn't give you the right to be like, ah, you have cancer. I you know, have cancer. Being famous gives you a lot of rights. Yeah. Yeah. Famous people are different than regular. <laughs> you can't just die. Look at OJ. Cancer. He can yeah. kill people. We talked about this the other week. All right, moving on. I got a game for us to play. Yes. It is, uh, guess, guess that strange sound. So if you could turn on the Bluetooth speaker, por favor. And I will pull up the track that I made earlier today with all the sounds. All right, here is the first sound. bird that can like, mimic the sounds of almost anything around it. And the R2-D2 bird. A Mockingjay. It's a Mockingjay. <laughs> no. But yeah, it's a bird like somewhere like in the rainforest that like is mimicking construction 
Because it's been around it. That's not specific. No. What? Ooh, it's not a bird? It is a bird, but it's not in the rainforest. Oh, it's okay. in a park. Yeah, I was about oh, to okay. say, that definitely sounded like there was some, like... I thought it was in a rainforest. Yeah, I felt like that was in a more urban area. Yeah. It does a good R2-D2, though. How do we it get, does. How do we get points At first, I thought it was a laser gun. Uh, it's I more, it's guess kind of Yo-Yo got a point, because yeah. he just shouted it out. Okay, fair how well. about... These are really hard, or I thought they were, so you guys can all be a team. I was if you get four out of the seven, then you win. If not, I win. You win. Oh. Yeah, all three of you. You against us. Yeah. I think so I like found sounds that you can't Let's guess. Let's do this. Combine all right. This is number two. <laughs> this is from Harry Potter. Is that a balloon that they're letting the air out of? No. Wait, how many guesses do we get? I'll give you like... A minute of guesses. All right, okay. so we have balloon. Do we have cat? Four for four? Cat is not it uh, either. Is um, it like a rabbit? You can't just throw out random uh, things. I mean, I guess you could, but... It's chinchilla. I'm guessing around there. No. Is it an animal? It is. Ooh. I was going to go for ambulance siren. But is it is a hamster? Insane. No. In pain? Uh-uh. <laughs> is it a domesticated animal? No. Oh, oh is it a fox? <gasps> no. Is it... A coyote? <laughs> No. Is it a wild a mountain lion? I think it's you guys a, have oh, no like idea. Bird. Yeah, yeah, I have no clue. A wild it's a no, it's a toad being poked. A toad? Yeah, it's if you watch the video, it's someone's holding a toad and poking it and then it goes a toad? <laughs> if a toad did that. It really sounds like a balloon deflating. I, I would run exercise that sucker. <laughs> Get out of him, Satan! Give him the <laughs> Alright, here's the next one. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody's see like I had recognized that that is a cat and he's being like brushed or vacuumed or something and he's just like <laughs> Oh, is that one of our songs? We're yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it's a good video. All right, that one was easy. I just thought it was really funny. Yeah. It's two points for Team Gryffindor. Yeah. Gryffindor. Two points for you guys, one point for me. Gryffindor. I can't see the next one, but I'll go... Oh, yeah, this one's... Uh, I think you'll like it. A fart. <laughs> oh, it's someone eating chips, isn't it? Ew. Is it? No. Is it someone eating, like, celery or broccoli? Ooh. No. Are they cracking their knuckles? Uh-uh. Is it breaking twigs? Okay, all right, all right. Hold on, yo-yo. Are they eating let's clear, let's ask some hey, how about questions? You guys could, like, think about it instead of guessing nah, stuff. Fire. Rapid fire this sucker. All right, is it... <laughs> is it... Fire pulling these mother jammers. Is it somebody eating something? No. no. Okay, then. That's off the table. Oh, yeah. bubble wrap. It's bubble wrap. No. Frick! Is it large bubble wrap? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have said yes. Oh, yeah. I'm breaking a thing. Of bubble wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Get off the bubble wrap. I, I don't think you guys know. What is it? I'll give you one more guess. Okay. Wait, we gotta make this count. I'll give you a hint, actually. Yeah, I was about to ask for that. Um... Actually, I, I'll give you a hint, but this is me telling you, you're not going to get a, okay. the point, because I can't think of a hint that's not easy okay. to guess. It's the elbow of the leg. As an oh, it's a knee? knee popping? That's a, yeah, that's a oh. human knee. Wow. <laughs> Play that again. Let's see. I mean, mine's popped before, but not like that. Oh, that's the cat. <laughs> that's a knee. <laughs> Alright, here we go, here we go. Oh god. Oh, oh that sounds so ah! 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 Okay, I mean, that's a cat. That's a cat. <laughs> no, okay. That's a toad. And it's a knee popping, but it's like over and over again? super uh, amplified. The guy on Mr. Deeds <laughs> super broken. <laughs> no, it's like if you were to hold us like a stethoscope, is that the hearing yeah. thing? Up to a knee. That's called the hearing thing scientifically. So Let's do the next one. For us. That's a baby rabbit. Someone 
plant the water down. No. Frick. But it is an animal. I cannot confirm. What the frick? You can confirm all the, all the other ones. Yeah, it's an animal. Okay. okay. Is this... But it's not is a this bird? A, it's not a bird. Is it a baby animal? It is a baby animal. Not a baby or at least it looked like a baby animal to me. Is it a puppy? No. No. Is it a newborn? What, a newborn? Baby? Quit the saying things. We already established it. Yeah, we just talked about that. Uh, like, it could be a puppy... Or a newborn puppy. No. Hello. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, give me these looks, Jared. I'll tell you, this won't help, but it's covered in sand. Oh. Maybe it will, I guess. Maybe turtle. No. Is it a snake? Uh-uh. Ew. Snakes have no vocal. Alright, that's another point for me. Frick. It's a little froggy. <laughs> that's the <a> second frog? <laughs> yeah. Your... Well, the first one was a toad, it actually. It so. an amphibian limit on the game. <laughs> Frogs make weird sounds. Uh... If you learn nothing that else. Burp. That was a burp. All right. <laughs> One point for us. Yeah, so that was a little frog covered in sand. It's 3-3 three, three now. Little there's there's three, two, two more. Three, two. I'm winning. 3-2. I got the burp, though. So you guys, got, you guys have to get the last two we correct. We can do it. If you give us another knee popping, I'm going to pop. <laughs> We got into the next one. I can I can play it again. No, it's not. It's a bird. Is it an owl? Is it an owl? Yeah, it's an owl. Yeah, yes. right. What the heck? I've seen that video. What is that? Cracks me up. Gary, if I heard that so there's tonight. another one. I I don't know what type of animal it is, but it has huge eyes and it looks sad all the time. Yeah. But it makes a similar noise. Dude, if I heard that in the middle of the night. Like, I'd be running for, for I don't know what <laughs> It sounded like a, a guy running. trying to be scary That's and failing. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like someone who works in one of those haunted corn mazes who's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, it, it, perfect. It comes down to the, the very last one. Yes. Game seven. All We're right. <laughs> Here we go. We are the I words. <laughs> That's a cat coughing up a hairball. <laughs> I'm picturing the video because I watched it earlier. I'm it's so like, funny and so weird. Choking on salt. Hey. Hey. Is it human? Frank. <laughs> yeah, it's a dude. It's a, it's a human moron. Choking on Do we have to know the name of the human moron? Yeah, you gotta say the name what? so that I win. No, I'm, <laughs> sa I'm sad because you got it. <laughs> I did all animals on purpose, so yeah. I was hoping you'd guess an animal. That sounded like a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a, from a video called Weird Sounds I Can Make. <laughs> it's just this idiot in front of his computer. All right, people. Uh, okay. I guess you you guys win this one. Yes, dude. What do we get? Nothing. Oh. You get to win. You get the sound of our disappointment. You get the thing that's better than losing. Hey, one of my... It, it really pertains to one of my other headlines, which... Um, Ooh, back to the headline game. Real quick, it was just a direct quote that said something... Here, hang on, what was it? It, it was a picture of uh, an Asian golfer, and the headline was just the quote, either, You're either a champion, comma, or nothing. That's right. So we're champions. That's the Asian attitude. So Gavin's nothing. It's like A minus is not an A. Oh, dear Lord, you gotta dear. do better than that. Frick. You're either first or you're last. You That's know right. What they say. Valedictorian or zero GPA. Or you know? you're not even gonna do anything with your life. Really That's right. You gotta be a doctor. <laughs> or uh what else? I what else do Asians do? Oh no, himself. stop. No, that's what we were talking about the whole time. Oh, was it? Yeah, he said Japanese golfer or something, and you're either a champion or you're not, and I said that's the Asian way. Where is that attitude that's in that World attitude. War Two? Yeah, true. All right, last segment. Uh, this one is called Things That I Wish I Had Learned in School. Um, so the name of the game is we are going to take one subject that we spent any amount of time learning in school, uh, and it can be as specific as like, oh, I thought like learning the causes of slavery was stupid, which we're not saying it is. Don't, 
don't use that unless you actually want to. Yeah. But it can be something as specific as that, and you're going to replace it with a different subject that you would have enjoyed or found more useful mm. learning in your time at school. Go. Uh, okay, I think if I'm going to go a practical route... Which, okay, college has a lot more eclectic classes than high school. You know, high school, it's like physical science, American government, too. Like, there's really not a whole lot of variety. But, like, here at Evangel next semester, they're <sighs> offering a humor class. What? Yeah, Dr. Kelton's teaching. What? He's yeah. funny. I know. I take classes with him. So. We go on weekend trips together. So. Some of, like, I'll do a practical one. I, Evangel is a liberal arts college, but I think it would be really cool, and I would totally take it if someone at our physical plant offered, like, a diesel mechanics class Ooh. or, like, uh, like some sort of some, some sort of practical learning. Yeah, uh, DSMC 110. Right, or, like, how... Yeah, sure, whatever. Well, I don't know. What Intro to diesel mechanics. Okay, I I've, I've thought about also... Maybe they offer it here, but maybe like coding for people who aren't tech savvy, because I'd learn how to write code, but I don't want to be a computer science major. I dig. Um, on a less practical, like on a more like goofy uh, bent, I would love to have um, a class on how to write satire. Like... And, like, the study of satire. I guess that's not that goofy. That is pretty goofy, John. You're getting way out there with Yeah, this. I know. <laughs> I actually came up with that... With, uh, came up with that off the top of my head. Because I wasn't actually... I didn't have anything primed or ready to go. That's it's just how quick do. I am. Yeah. yeah. We do all the time. It's the lightning. Um, I'll answer for Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo had to leave because he's a better person than we are. Um, but I think... Not. <laughs> yeah. I think Yo-Yo uh, would greatly benefit yeah greatly benefit from a class that focus on how like teaching people how to lie to other people because if you don't know anything about my man yo-yo is that he is absolute garbage at like trying to deceive people even when it's a good reason to deceive people say like um, like secrets yeah like secrets like i I uh, I don't involve Yo-Yo in on a lot of secret plots because if I do, I know if like like if this was World War Two uh, and we were in a concentration camp, I know that they go to torture him first to get the secrets out of him. You know what I'm saying? He'd just be the weak link in the operation, yeah. not from like a performance standpoint, but from a keeping a secret standpoint. So I would make Yo-Yo take a keeping secrets 101 class. You could give him a whole list of names. Like princeps when he got captured. Yeah, yeah. I think he, I think he would benefit from it. That was World War One, though, or I guess before the war started. But oh, I, yeah. I'm um, I I need to go. Um, I think that I would rather have not learned anything in my higher level chemistry class because <laughs> who cares? Um, I'm not. I mean, I guess the pre med students, but that's a small group. And for the rest of us, it's completely useless now. It hasn't changed my worldview. I don't care about carbons and uh, whatever else. See, this is how much I... That's how I, much you yeah. paid attention. This is how it. much... Well, I paid attention and I got bad grades. And now I don't know anything about it. So I wish I could have taken a class that was interesting like a better creative writing class because the creative writing classes that were offered were mostly like let's write poetry and like we are, we're only going to read the romantics and we're going to try to write romantic poetry and like I don't I'm not a big fan <laughs> of romantic poetry uh, with the big R not like roses are red violets are blue I love romantic poetry but you can't expect a high school or college group to like write good romantic poetry Yeah. or like maybe there's a prodigy or two but, like, speaking as someone with an English concentration, I can't even... Not to brag. Produce. Yeah, not, not to brag. <laughs> not to brag. I don't have cancer. <laughs> yeah, look out. So, I, I would rather have seen something like... Uh, a <laughs> this is pretty goofy. Like, a stream of consciousness surrealist poetry oh class. Goodness. That'd be really fun, I think. Sad. Just, uh... Have you never done a stream of consciousness? We did it in my humanities class. 
we did it in my my humanities class, and we just had to write the the words that came to our mind for a minute straight, and it was pretty interesting. Everybody's uh, at what everybody produced. So it would have been cool if there was a class about that. Um, I'll say let's let's call a spade a spade here. Writing cursive. Learning to write oh, cursive yeah. was the biggest waste of everyone's life that was born anywhere around the time that we were born yep. in 1996. Okay, here's the thing, though. I don't... I mean, I know they thought computers were going to be as big as they were, Yeah. but I don't think anyone considered, like, text messaging to become... Like, True. I think they thought IMing and that kind of thing was a hobby, was going to be more of a hobby and le- less of a communication source. So, you know, calligraphy has been a major thing forever. I mean, even going back to, like, scribes and stuff. So then now, getting to this point, it's almost irrelevant because you can just break out a laptop. Well, yeah, that's valid. I'm just saying. <laughs> if I could replace anything, hindsight's twenty twenty. so I'm going to get rid of the stupid handwriting course that I always did really poorly in because I would have bad handwriting. You have to take a full handwriting course? Yeah, in, like, elementary school and stuff oh. like that. Yeah, it's still an open wound, John. Let's not rub salt in it. Anyway, what I would replace that with is a survival skills course. Like, we do a whole entire man versus wild up in there. Also, urban survival skills. What to do if you get kidnapped. What to do if you are the Yakuza and you get punked by some triads. Yeah, what to do if a rival gang comes into town. Exactly. How to buy a hot dog from a cart. Yep. Ooh. Difficult, yeah. actually. Really? If you say the wrong things, they won't sell to you. Oh, yeah. You, you can't order it with ketchup. You have to order it uh, with mustard. Cause well, ketchup... no, you gotta say the red sauce. The red sauce? Yeah. That's what they call it in the business. Yeah. I've just heard that you're not supposed to order it with ketchup on there. No. But anyway, all this would be the taught. The ketchup. <laughs> all this would be taught in yeah. my survival skills course. And we'd have a generation of children that would just be ready for the nuclear apocalypse. Yeah, the nuclear apocalypse. The nuclear. <laughs> okay, so actually, my dad talked about when he was in, like, elementary or high school, they had to take a survival skills course, and I still have his 1968 manual what? of like it like literally how to tie these knots like if you get captured <laughs> what to like what to do the thing is i mean the thing is almost 50 years old nice. and it is still like fairly relevant of course like none of us are going to be crashing our planes in the you know in hanoi but but nature uh, don't change yeah, man. Nature, it's like exactly they're going to be asking questions regardless of whether it's Vietnam or whether it's uh, Arkansas. That's right. That's true. Oh. Yeah. You can also get your hands on those old Boy Scout handbooks from, like, I think even as far back as, like, 30s and 20s. But then again... Those are pretty cool. This is, this is, this is back when they considered hiding under your desk an effective <laughs> deterrent for a nuclear, nuclear fallout. Bombs. Hey, dude. Those desks were made of lead. The, uh, the duck and cover video, that is some brilliant comedy. Listen... Before we get going on this new rabbit trail, I think we gotta cut this. Yeah, up. I, we just gotta like, stop we gotta, ourselves. We gotta stop you gotta ourselves. know when to hold them. Know when hey, to fold them. That's exactly. right. Know when to walk away. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening, Gavin. Tell them where show notes and stuff are at. Hey, the little boys night dot wordpress dot com. All right. Look us up on iTunes. Look us up on SoundCloud. I swear, if we have to say this again to you all, I'm not gonna be happy with you. John's not gonna be happy with you. And Riley, he's here. Yeah, I'm here. Riley's going to be ticked, okay? Look us up on iTunes. Look us up on SoundCloud. We have a Facebook, a Twitter, and a Snapchat. We need endorsements. Yeah. Please endorse us. Yeah. You know companies that want advertising. Muscle milk protein. We're all jacked out of our minds. Freak yeah. (laughs) Later.